both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here for this leadership meeting, our quarterly leadership meeting. And as I mentioned earlier, I did put the agenda in the chat. Bishop Nicholas is actually first up on the agenda, but he's running a little bit late. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, go on to the rest of the agenda and we can come back once uh, Sayedna joins us, we can come back to his opening address. Uh, so very quickly, I wanted to mention our virtual Bible study with Father Stephen D. Young. First of all, has been uh, very well attended lately, and I appreciate everyone's participation who has joined us live for those. Uh, we've been continuing to have that on the third Thursday of each month, and it just so happens that the next Bible study is only two days away. So this coming Thursday, the 18th, we will have our next Amen Bible study. And then some really good news. We're going to do it in person in the month of June uh, for those who can attend at the Parish Life Conference in Miami. It's actually on the Parish Life Conference schedule, and it will be on Thursday, June the 15th. And we'll do our best to uh, live stream that out to anyone that can join, but it's going to be earlier in the day. Usually we do it in the evening, but since it, it'll be at the Parish Life Conference, it's actually scheduled to be earlier. So uh, by live streaming it, we're hoping that anyone that can't attend the PLC can maybe tune in and watch from work or from home or wherever they might be. Uh, but that's coming up uh, only a month away. It's kind of hard to believe the PLC is that close. Elias, it, feel, it, it felt like forever, uh, but it's going to be here before we know it, right? Um, and hopefully you all have been enjoying, there's been a couple of brief videos with Bishop Nicholas kind of promoting the Parish Life Conference. Really encourage you all to share that uh, with others in your parishes as well to help just uh, raise awareness. There was also a great email that went out this morning, uh, kind of an educational email uh, from Domsey on what a Parish Life Conference is, why we should attend it. Uh, and I think those are good to share as well. I know I shared that with my local Amen chapter, uh, just to help, especially some of our newer members or just inquirers, catechumens, or newly orthodox that may not even know what a PLC is. It's always good to uh, to remind people or or to to share what it is for people that don't know. Uh, Elias, would you mind doing the financial update and sharing your screen? We're going to yep. do a, tr a quick treasury report. Guys, we don't always review finances in these meetings, but I thought it would be a good idea because we recently requested some donations, which uh, we are very appreciative of, and we wanted to show the results of that. Uh, we also recently ran some merchandise sales that went very well, and we want to be very transparent with everyone. Uh, so, Elias, if you wouldn't mind giving us a quick uh, summary. Okay, this uh, report is as of today. Um, just a quick financial statement update for the AMEN uh, account. Um, the last time we shared, I think, reported uh, at the beginning of this year, the AMEN account had $992. So everything that happened between January 1st and today is as follows. We've had a total num uh, dollar amount, 61982 in donations. We've had a total of 435 in merchandise sales. And then the expenses that have taken place, again, between January 1st and today. MailChimp is what basically the newsletter uh, that you get from uh, Michael and Bert when they send out the newsletters on a weekly basis. Uh, merchandise expenses, uh, where we've purchased merchandise. And then we also uh, paid for the upcoming PLC, a vendor table, so we can display information about AMEN as well as AMEN merchandise. So current reported financial um, dollar amount is $1,667.45. Thanks, Elias. If you can leave that up on the screen for a minute. Sure. I also uh, just wanted to make a couple of comments. <clears throat> First of all, my sincere thanks on behalf of the Antiochian Men Board for all who donated. I know some people who donated are in this meeting right now. Uh, and there's many others that have donated. Uh, it was an overwhelming response. As you can see, the cost for the vendor table itself is $100. We ended up raising 
as Elias put on here, over six hundred dollars, and that's just that's just a tremendous response and something that that we've all been very deeply touched by uh, on the Antiochian Men Board, and we are we are first of all more than we've more than reached our goal because we had to pay for uh, shipping the merchandise to Miami. It's a long way <laughs> this year for us to get it there, and also uh, uh, a, car a cardboard display that'll sit on a tabletop. Uh, shipping isn't cheap, but with these donations, it more than covers that. We're also, because the donations were so strong, looking into creating kind of a standing banner for the Antiochian men that we can use not only at Parish Life Conferences, but uh, for the spiritual retreats, both fall and winter, and really any in-person events, even Antiochian men in-person retreats in the future. Uh, so this allows us to do that. Uh, so again, want to provide full transparency to what we've received and what the money is being used for. Uh, creating a banner was something we discussed as a board in our last meeting and something that will give us a great presence at this Parish Life Conference, more visibility to the organization. And of course, since, uh, since we have Metropolitan Saba attending, we want to make a good first impression and have a very prominent uh, kind of display and just kind of marketing and a sign for the organization. Since we started Amen in our diocese, we thought, you know, this is our best chance to put our best foot forward uh, and to also just celebrate the fact that, you know, it's been more than a few years now and uh, and we're going to become more and more visible, not just with the marketing, but just in our presence at diocesan events and in our parishes. Um, are there any questions about the financial statement here? I, I will add one other comment. I, I see Eric has a question just real quick. The donations, um, I, I hope it's relevant. To me, it, it made me feel good about what we're doing because we've received some donations from people outside of our diocese. So our reach is not just inside Domsey, which was you know, awesome to have somebody uh, donate to this cause. If you will, they're not gonna benefit. They're not at, <laughs> at our PLC. Uh, to see what the donation is going for, that they were willing to do that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was, and there's more than one person from outside the diocese that donated. Yeah. So it's, uh, it is really a wonderful, wonderful thing to to see. And it's very much appreciated. Um, Eric, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I had a question when you were talking about the banner that you may be able to use at other events for Amen. Are those those ones that, sit on the floor and you just pull up like you see at a trade show. Yeah, that's exactly Is that right. what you, okay. I think that's a, I just, that was my question. I think that's a great idea and would add some uh, pizzazz to the table and the cardboard <laughs> cutout. Yeah. I, think that, I think that would be really great. Yeah, no, and our whole board um, agrees with you, Eric. In fact, it uh, wasn't even my idea. I, I have to credit Bert Noyes was the one that brought that up, our secretary. And uh, we've, I've already started researching. There's a couple of options online. We've actually done one locally in my local parish. Vista Print is a good option. So we're kind of looking at what the best deal will be for us to set up there. But um, yeah, I'm glad that you like the idea. Any other questions from anyone on the finances, the financial statement? If not, I'm just going to do a quick check here and see. I I uh, believe Bishop Nicholas has joined us. So Sayedna, if you're in a position uh, to perhaps address all of us, uh, we can go back to that opening uh, if you're available. Sure. Good evening, everyone. God bless you all. Uh, it's been a few meetings since I met with you. How many meetings have I missed? Um, Probably been a couple. Yeah, because <laughs> of the two. Because yeah. you had a lot going on, it wasn't like you weren't busy, right? I was at the beach getting a. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I was um, traveling quite a bit, and at least one of those two meetings, uh, I was in Lebanon meeting with the patriarch as he asked to meet with the bishops uh, before the election of. Um, of the, the new metropolitan. So they have been extremely busy, um, maybe seven, eight months now. Um, and um, uh, I was hoping that it would slow down, but 
it's actually getting even busier. Um, I had a wedding scheduled for this past weekend. On Sunday, I was planning to be uh, on location uh, last Thursday, and then the enthronement and board of trustees meeting were scheduled for the weekend. So I had to fly to New Jersey for the board of trustees meeting and then the enthronement and Saturday night to fly to the parish to do the wedding on Sunday. Um, so it's been extremely busy, um, super busy. But thank God, um, things within the diocese are going well with uh, uh, the usual stuff. It wouldn't be a diocese if there aren't issues to resolve. Um, so there are issues to resolve, but they are within uh, reach. We can resolve them. Um, and we have been resolving them, thank God. Um, so that's what has been happening. Uh, but uh, thanks to the uh, Amen board, to the DMC, uh, to all the boards in the diocese, uh, things have uh, been uh, continuing to run with uh, some um, presence of me in those meetings uh, because of the uh, what has been happening. So now Metropolitan Saba is in charge as of uh, uh, Saturday, this past Saturday around noon or 1 p.m. He is the ruling bishop in the Archdiocese now. And um, all letters needs to be addressed to him, uh, not to Metropolitan Antonios. And all the commemorations started by Saturday evening to happen commemorating Metropolitan Saba instead of the patriarch, because he's now in, in charge. Hopefully all the church, churches are doing that based on the uh, decree by Metropolitan Saba. Um, normally when there is no Metropolitan, the patriarch gets uh, commemorated. And when a Metropolitan is elected, uh, then the patriarch is no longer commemorated but the uh, Metropolitan. And the Metropolitan commemorates the patriarch. Um, any questions for me about what has happened in the past eight months? And if the, the question is too difficult, I will, I will refer it to Michael. Any questions, any uh, comments? Only the easy questions for Sayedna. I'll take the hard ones tonight. You need a break anyway. <laughs> it has been a, a, a really tough day today as well. So many phone calls. Um, I would be on the phone and three, four phone calls come in. So I have to say, I'll call you later, I'll call you later, I'll call you later. Um, well, okay. Sayedna, Sayed, I wonder if you would, we're, we're going to be talking about the Parish Life Conference here in just a minute, but I was wondering if you would uh, be willing to talk a little bit about why it's so important that we attend diocesan events like a PLC and what, what we can do to help inform others and get others excited about the reasons for attending uh, the Parish Life Conference. Yeah, um, I've been, I've been uh, visiting parishes on weekends, continuing to do that. That never stopped unless I was overseas. Um, and I've been talking about that to every parish and recruiting people for the oratorical and uh, Bible Bowl and uh, for camp as well. Um, it's basically parishioners of a given parish don't only belong to that parish. They belong to the diocese as well and belong to the archdiocese as well. Um, that's the way a hierarchical church uh, works. Um, in other churches, um, every church stands on its own and does not have to belong to anything else. Uh, but that's not how we work. Um, we we um, bring our uh, family style life from the way uh, St. Ignatius described it, that when the bishop is present, that's, that's where the church is. So it's not just 
the local parish that is the church. Um, that's one dimension. The second dimension is that um, we all are called to become Christ-like, God-like. And um, that is being done at the parish, but augmented by the diocese with all of these events. We are the only diocese uh, that I know of that we have effectively three PLCs uh, that are very spiritual. We have the actual PLC in June, which is next month. We have the four retreat, which is a PLC. We get three, 350 uh, people in that, and it's purely spiritual. The same thing in the winter. We have a winter retreat. We have also um, uh, Lenten retreats during the Atlantic. We have summer camp. We have winter camp. Um, those are all designed to help all of us to become godlike. Um, it is not an event that we become godlike. It's a process, and it takes years to inch closer uh, to God and become godlike. That's why it's very important to participate in these diocesan events. Um, at the organization level, like the Amen uh, organization, at the parish level, um, at all the other organization level, if it is for nothing else but to fellowship with other Orthodox Christians in the diocese. And there is another goal of this that I don't publicize too, too much. People meet and might connect and might get married to other Orthodox people within the diocese, which is something really important. When, when, we, when our people get married to people in the diocese, that means they're already Christian, they're already Orthodox, that brings the disagreement level, the possible disagreement level to a smaller amount. There will always be disagreements and problems between couples, between husband and wife. But having the same basis of faith makes the disagreement more modern. So that's another dimension of the importance of having these events and participating in these events. And I'm sure there are many other dimensions for all of that. So I ask all of you to go back to your parishes and uh, encourage people to participate. As you can see, when I go to parishes, I create videos. Um, I created the first video in, uh, in Concord, um, uh, North Carolina, and then I got a phone call from uh, Bryce saying, why don't you do it at every parish? create small video, and I've been doing that. Uh, Elias just posted last week, was it, or this week, uh, another video. I still have a couple more videos that we can do, what I can send to uh, uh, Elias. In there. And those small videos that encourage people to participate in the PLC. Thank you, Sayedna, and, and I, wholeheartedly agree with you the the importance of having fellowship with each other in what you brought up about establishing connections with others this is something that was just brought up in my local amen chapter this past week someone asked a question said he was feeling isolated having a hard time finding you know uh, a good wife or someone who he might marry and someone else from our brotherhood locally mentioned go to dice and events this is a great chance to meet others that are orthodox christian that share the same faith and if they're going to these events it's highly likely these are the people that are taking their faith seriously because they're actually showing up for these events uh and and i i, I can't um emphasize that that point enough and if nothing else even if you're already married you're going to meet other couples that are going through similar things that you are but again share your same faith you're going to meet people from all over the diocese and and I've said this before, but I think, uh, and this is something you've said before, Sayedna, 
that you know we a lot of us like for myself i work in a in in a corporate environment i'm given vacation days and we think about a lot of times tithing to the church giving financially but you know, think about our vacation days, tithing some of those vacation days for our own spiritual growth, for uh, really giving some of that to God and showing up and uh, and being a part of uh, the diocese at large. And you really see the universal church coming together. You you feel it in the services and even at a parish life conference when you're in a ballroom set up with the icons, uh, you're all singing and worshiping together as, as a family, as a larger church together. And if you haven't had that experience, uh, I, 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 I wish I could explain to you what you're missing, but trust me, you're missing quite a bit. Uh, for those of you that have gone, please tell others and encourage others. It's only about a month away. It's been, uh, again, it's kind of snuck up on us here just a few weeks ago. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing hopefully many of you and, and many others there in Miami. Say so, any other comments before we move on with the meeting? Just to reiterate that please get your parishes involved and, and get them to go to the PLC and, and the other uh, um, uh, events. And by the way, camp is at um, maximum capacity. We have a record number of campers. Um, and uh, because of that, and because of um, a lot of young people getting jobs, full-time jobs, uh, and so on, um, we're having some issues, as all the other camps are having some issues, having enough um, staff. Um, so um, if you know of anyone who would like to become a counselor, uh, please let me know. All of you probably have my phone number, and if you don't, I can give it to you right now. Um, so we need uh, at least two uh, female counselors and two male counselors. We can operate on what we have, but it will be the minimum uh, number of counselors, uh, which is not advisable. So we need a couple for each. Uh, I, uh, Bert, if I could, we usually do this during our board meetings, but if you wouldn't mind adding an, uh, an item in the next newsletter that we send out asking if anyone uh, is interested or knows somebody in their parish that could be a staff member at Camp St. Thecla, I would appreciate it. And Bert, I'll probably send that to you in an email too. Um, I see, Eric, you have a question. Your hand is raised virtually. Did you want to unmute? Yeah, thank you, Michael and Syedna. It's uh, so good to see you. And so thankful that you're able to join us tonight, Master Bless. God bless you. God bless you. Um, thank you. I'm very thankful to be able to join you. So I do have a, uh, I do have a question, and it goes back to your um, opening comments and question to the group about, you know, what's happened over the last eight months and um, the enthronement of his eminence, Metropolitan Saba. Um, can you kind of give us some insight or color to what we can expect from Metropolitan Saba um, from what you know about him and, and your experience um, thus far and, uh, or, and what he may have shared for the Archdiocese and, and um, you know, just what, what changes, if any, or what, what, what can we kind of expect? Is, is that an appropriate, fair question? Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, what I know about him and what I know from dealing with him is that he's very he's a very kind man. He is a man of prayer. Again, very kind, a mind of a man of prayers and a man of God. But at the same time, he hasn't been in the US for a long time. I believe the last time he was here about 30 years ago for six months. That's what he said. Um, he is trying very hard to learn so much about our, our archdiocese in terms of culture, in terms of mentality, in terms of board of trustees, uh, in terms of the language, in terms of uh, so many things that he needs to learn. Um, he, his learning curve is very steep. 
in order to come up to speed with, uh, with all of that. Uh, I'm very hopeful uh, because of his personality, because of his kindness, because of his being a man of prayer and, uh, and uh, um, a, a good man in general. Um, but there are a lot of things that he's gonna need to learn uh, so that he feels comfortable in, in leading us. And this is not a negative comment. This is um, uh, what is happening right now. It is a fact. I'm not trying to, to say anything negative about him, to the contrary. And as you may have uh, read in my letter that I sent to the diocese, the same day he was elected, um, that God chose to remove this burden from me uh, by not getting me elected to, to this position. Uh, because I had um, mixed feelings. Uh, not The one that is most important is that I would not be with Domsey day to day. The Metropolitan is the Metropolitan of all dioceses still, but I would not be with Domsey every day. I would not be visiting uh, the parishes uh, twice a week, uh, twice a, uh, not a week. I wish I could do that twice a week, twice a year. Um, so um, that was a big reservation of mine. So thank God this it happened this way. And um, it, it's actually a burden to be a metropolitan. It is not easy. There are so many things that pull you in so many directions. But I'm hopeful. He had told us during a meeting um, during Bright Week that he does see that there need to be changes. Uh, one of them is that he does not uh, like uh, the way um, uh, how much authority the bishops ha have, and he wants them to have much more authority. Um, 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 he wants to invest much more authority in the bishops. He wrote an article in 2011 that um, back then in 2011, there was auxiliary bishops in America and auxiliary bishops in um, the Archdiocese of Akkar. And he said the experience of the auxiliary bishops in the Archdiocese of Akkar was successful because the bishops had almost all the authorities in their diocese. And uh, he published that article that he wrote in his monthly newsletter in his archdiocese in Quran, Syria. So that's the way he thinks. He thinks that the bishops should have full authority. That's, that was in 2011. If that is still the case, then meaning he still thinks in the same way, then that's what he is going to do probably at some point. But this is, um, I'm putting together pieces of the puzzle. They, uh, I'm hoping all of these pieces go into the same puzzle. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm not mixing puzzles. Um, so that's what I know about him. Okay. Thank you very much for your offering, Sayedna. Appreciate it. And again, so good to see you. You're welcome. So good to see you too. Thank you, Sayedna. With your blessing, I'd like to move on with the agenda of the meeting. Welcome. The uh, Parish Life Conference that we all have already mentioned is coming up, and we have uh, quite a few events planned for a men. And on Wednesday, actually the first evening of the PLC, uh, we're going to do kind of an informal meet and greet in the lobby for those who can 
make it while we're planning it between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. It's not on the Parish Life Conference schedule, uh, but we did include it in our newsletter last week, and we'll continue to include that in our newsletters to remind everyone, uh, for anyone that is arriving on Wednesday, most people do start arriving in the late afternoon and early evening. Uh, we will have a, a section in the lobby where uh, a lot of the men who are gathering can just meet each other, get to know each other, uh, have a little bit of fellowship in the lobby. So that's what we're planning on the first evening, even though it's not on the schedule. I encourage you all, if you're coming, to attend that. And please also let other men from your parishes know, especially those who are coming. Uh, and then on Thursday, that's the big day. So Thursday, June the 15th, we have four different sessions planned for the men in our diocese. We have the first session is our business meeting, which we have every year. Uh, it shouldn't take more than 45 minutes. Um, for that meeting and then we're going to move on to a guest speaker we will have father jacob Andun, who is the pastor of saint stephen orthodox church in uh, hiram georgia he is going to speak on uh, he'll speak on the theme of the plc which is let us make man in our image according to our likeness uh, but it's going to be colon there's a subtitle what is a man and i think uh, that's a compelling enough talk title for me especially, but I'm sure for many others, because of all of the confusion right now uh, that's happening in the culture of uh, people thinking that man and woman are interchangeable, which of course is not the case. And so hearing from Father Jacob on this topic, I think will be very edifying, very educational, and, and, a, and a wonderful opportunity for all of those present uh, to hear uh, what the church has to say about this topic. Uh, and then the third session is going to be um, with Father Stephen DeYoung. He's actually going to do sessions three and four. So both of those are back to back a little bit later on in the afternoon. Yeah, Father Stephen will start with a 30 minute talk on his book, Introduction to Your Bible, the whole counsel of God, Introduction to Your Bible book that he released. Um, it's not his most recent book, but it's the one right before that. And it's actually going to be the book that we will be reading as an organization and uh, having a, a book discussion about in the fall and the topic of our next uh, Amen virtual retreat. So he'll give us kind of a, a little bit of a primer, an introduction to that book. And then for the final hour and a half of that session, we will do the in-person Bible study with Father Stephen, which I mentioned uh, earlier in the meeting. Um, are there any questions about the schedule for the Parish Life Conference, particularly the Amen events? Is the uh, informal get together on Wednesday night? Is that going to include dinner, or, or are we going? To, you know, or what? Are your, what were your thoughts there? Excellent question. I'm glad you asked that. It is going to be an informal uh, fellowship and get together in the lobby. However. It could turn into something else. Uh, so there may be a chance for us to all gather together. Uh, I don't know the layout of the hotel. There might be a, an area where we can uh, have food there at the hotel, uh, or it may be possible, depending on what's close by, that some might want to go to dinner together. Um, I think what we're going to do is just have it start as a meet and greet and then see how it evolves from there and see what's uh, convenient and what's possible <laughs> based on the location. So. Uh, we're not sure how many people will come to the meet and greet. If it's a small group, it might be easier for us all to go to a you know, specific location. Larger group, uh, we may still be able to do that, but we'll just have to see when we get there. This is also the first time that we've done anything like this on the Wednesday evening. Uh, I have to credit Mr. Bryce Kirk, the subdeacon, Mr. Bryce Kirk, for doing that. Actually, Sayed and I forgot to tell you, we had a Bryce Kirk sighting at our parish last Sunday. He visited his old stomping ground at St. Nicholas, so it was good to be with him. But Bryce wow. had this <laughs> Bryce had this idea to uh, to do kind of a meet and greet that first evening, and and maybe the next year it'll be something on the schedule. But we'll just kind of see how it goes this first time. Good question, Eric. Thanks for asking. Um, if there's no other questions, I don't see any other hands raised. I'll just move on to the next item, which is the Coming Out of Chaos podcast. In our last leadership meeting, we mentioned that we were going to restart that, and we've recorded a couple of episodes now in a new series focused on the lives of some of the saints 
that we feel, Bryce and I feel, uh, really exhibit the the Amen core values very well uh, through their lives. And so that series has been very well received. We actually received more feedback, uh, positive feedback on those two episodes than any others to date. So that's a, a good sign. Uh, we were going to record the third episode last night, but Bryce has a computer that was made in the, in the mid nineties and uh, he has to replace his computer. So we're, uh, we're going to re we're going to record that episode later this week when he, he gets something a little bit more modern. I'm exaggerating. I think he said it was 2018, but um, he spent, I think, an hour trying to get it started. So to me, that's that feels like the 90s. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> uh, all right, well, we look forward to recording. Hopefully we'll be able to post the next episode here in the next uh, week, week and a half. We'll see. Uh, but appreciate everyone's support and those who have sent us the positive feedback on those recent episodes. Uh, it's taken a lot more preparation for these. We're really taking it serious and doing our best to make sure that we have a good handle of the material. When we talk about the saints, I mean, it's hard to do them justice because all the saints are such great examples to us. Uh, and we want to make sure we're in- including the best parts, best highlights that we can and not go on forever. So uh, we appreciate, again, everyone's support and just continue to spread the word about these episodes. I mean, it's all about uh, becoming more godlike. It's about learning from the saints examples and and these podcasts i've actually heard this in a lot of feedback are great solutions for a lot of our brothers a lot of the men in our brotherhoods who are very busy and maybe are working multiple jobs maybe have long commutes maybe can't come to church all the time because of the season of life that they're in this is a way for them to stay connected to our brotherhood in even just listening to a podcast right so um I encourage everybody to please continue to spread the word about this Uh, because these episodes are taking a little bit more time to prepare and Bryce and I are much busier these days. It's moving to more of a once a month cadence. When we first started, it was about once every two weeks, but uh, we're hoping to at least get one out once a month from now on. So that's the update on the podcast. And uh, the next item on the agenda before we close is actually to talk about any success stories that may Uh, have happened since our last meeting, whether that's in our Amen chapters in the parish, in our parishes in general. Especially interested, though, and if there was anything that went on during Antiochian Men Month, which was in April, uh, which just uh, kind of concluded, any service projects, fellowship events, uh, would anybody have anything to share? Michael, I'll, uh, I'll share just a, just a few things, um, and I'll start off to say, <clears throat> you mentioned about how busy you and Bryce have gotten lately. Um, yeah, and Eric, if you could also just tell everybody what church you're from, uh, I want to try to do that with everybody that speaks up, too. Oh, uh, forgive me. Um, so, yeah, so I'm from St. Ignatius in Franklin, Tennessee, um, and so anyway, as I was mentioning about just, you know, I, I I'm probably, we're probably not alone in um, what seems like getting so, so, so busy, so much more busy these days, um, at at least professionally, which is uh, kind of a drag. So I kind of uh, preclude my statements to say, I wish I could devote more time to doing more amen activities uh, and promoting that within St. Ignatius. But, um, you know, after the, after um, the Lenten season, we're getting back to now having our monthly men's breakfast, which will be this Saturday. And again, we try to do that once a month um, at St. Ignatius. Uh, we also have a men's night out fellowship that has, um, has kind of started. And uh, once a month, we have uh, a number of the men meet just kind of an informal at a restaurant for just some, uh, like I said, informal uh, fellowship time together. So that's good. And that continues to grow. And, um, and then we have this little organic group of a book study, um, that is, that have been meeting, um, on a weekly basis. And that has kind of really grown and, uh, is in the process of kind of being formally moved over with father Phillips blessing and direction uh, ultimately, within the Amen group, it's not quite there yet, but it's growing. There's steps we're taking and some things that need to get done. So that's always very, um, I've just been very encouraged by the 
uh, proactivity, which in fact was started by um, a very small group of young men within our parish. And, um, and, and it's just exciting to see their zeal and their fervor of wanting to continue to grow um, their life in Christ and in orthodoxy. And um, it's been really, it's been really exciting. Um, so that's a, that's a positive. Uh, as far as any other events that we've had around the parish, um, uh, you know, we had a big spring cleaning day, which was in combination of Antiochian women and Antiochian men that got together and did a bunch of long overdue projects at St. Ignatius. Um, as you know, we have big grounds and big, <laughs> big facilities that are such a blessing, but they require a lot of work and we all came together to do that. So, um, I guess that's our, uh, I guess that's our update from St. Ignatius so far, Michael. Thank you. Oh, well, that's wonderful. It was a great update too. I appreciate it, Eric. And uh, Gary, I see you on with us. And I was wondering, I hate to put you on the spot, but I was wondering if you could maybe give us a quick update and, and let us know about your local parish and, and what, what's what been going on, what you're getting off the ground. Sure. Thank you, Michael. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, please let okay. us know what parish you're from and why you're here and what you have going on locally. Oh, sure. I, uh, my name is Gary. I attend uh, St. Peter's uh, Western Rite Antiochian Church in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, our priest is uh, Father Mark and uh, Bishop John. And uh, it's, it's humbling to be a gentleman presence as well as Bishop Nicholas. Thank you um, for allowing me to be here, Michael. Uh, right now, I, I did meet with uh, Father Mark, and we're going to try to um, nail down a, a day where we can have all the men gather for breakfast, and we are um, looking to implement the, the technology uh, format to get one calm going for the men, and just opening up to see, uh, as Father Mark was talking, and your suggestions to open up to see what the men uh, would like to have as a Bible study. And I was just writing down what Eric said he does. Um, thank you for the idea. So right now we're in the beginning stage and we're hoping this month to get something off the ground running. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate you sharing that, Gary. And I just want to let everyone know, Gary, even though he's not in our diocese, he, he asked if he could join. And of course, we don't ever tell people that they are not welcome. Um, but uh, he he asked for some some pointers because he and his uh, his his parish priest were looking to start a men's group. And so I shared with Gary what's worked for us in our diocese. Obviously, we're not uh, telling them what to do. We're not, uh, you know, instructing them. What we are doing is just sharing, hey, this is these are some things that we know work that, that have worked for us. And and I know Gary's been very receptive and appreciative of that. So it's wonderful to have you here as a guest, Gary. Thank you for joining us. Any others that would like to share successes? Michael, I have one more comment. If I could just, that I forgot that I would I'd like to quickly share. Um, so a little over, I guess, two years ago, as we were trying to reignite the Amen group at St. Ignatius post pandemic, or as we were coming out of COVID, um, developed a mailing list, an internal mailing list, which probably had just a little over 80 names internally at St. Ignatius. Now my mailing list is, um, it's either 112 or 115. And these are just individual men and um, that this is now going out to. And there's, there's truly not a coffee hour every Sunday that doesn't go by that we, that another um, new Man, man, either it's a, either a single man coming in, or him and his wife, or him and his family coming in that are being added to our distribution list, and it's really um, an amazing uh, blessing. Um, and thank God. Yeah, that's something I can even relate to in our local parish. We're even we're not anywhere near as big as Saint Ignatius, Eric, but we have. It seems like every Sunday, another young man or another young couple. Uh, and and the men are always thrilled to hear that there's an active men's group. They want to get plugged in. They want to meet the other guys, and and it makes them feel at home. And for a lot of the inquirers coming to the church, it, that goes a long way to help people to to really feel how brotherhood, how community in general, uh, can really be such a healing 
uh, thing, because again, men are so isolated right now. I mentioned earlier that there was a man saying he's feeling so isolated. I mean, we just need to get them plugged in and, and allow them to get to know some of our guys. And, and when that happens, it becomes so much easier, you know, to lead them to maybe make an appointment with our, our parish priest. And, uh, and, you know, if they feel welcome, I think they're going to do that. Uh, Derek, I see your hand raised. Did you want to share something? Sorry, I am struggling here with technology right now. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to share along that vein, because um, this is something about having a leadership role in a community. Michael does this very well. He, he's run out of business cards, which when he's not around, if men want to get plugged in, I can just go grab one, say, hey, this is Michael. Give him, a, give him a ring, text him. He's the lead, uh, you know, of Antiochian men. He's the president of the whole group. And this, this really helps him see the organization, and the, the structure that has been built. And he takes time to set up, just go have some coffee. Let's talk. He really makes the, the effort to even connect with the person who just walked in the doors the first time. So, I mean, this is something that has impacts on many people, myself included. And, you know, maybe this has been said before, but I feel like it's important to recognize that that individual effort given even by someone who's so busy that will say, you know what, let's schedule a day to have coffee and just talk. And that makes an impact on a lot of these young men. So once again, that's a continual uh, success story on Michael's part, because every time I see a new guy walk in, Michael takes the time to sit down with my fellowship, takes the time to connect with them, to get to know them, and really welcome them in from the top of the men's group. And it really helps a guy feel like, you know what, this is a place I can fit in. I have the top dog here saying, I'm, I'm important enough to have a conversation. And it really helps it all. It's very easy from that point on. So, well, I appreciate you saying that, Derek. Glory to God. Uh, I um, I didn't pay him to say that, guys. So uh, <laughs> I didn't expect he would be saying what he did. But I will tell you that I do try to lead by uh, example. You know, I don't want to ever ask someone to do something I'm not willing to do, but I can't not do it. Like, I'm serious, guys. When When some of these young men come into the church off the street, as Father Hans has said, you know, a lot of them are hurting. They don't always show it too. Men don't always show when they're hurting. And just to talk to another man to commiserate or just to, to get to know the person, uh, it goes a long way. And it's, I think, one of the reasons why Father Hans has, uh, has been so effective talking about the importance of brotherhood. And we need to practice what we preach. We need to live the faith. And so, Derek, I appreciate what you said. All the glory goes to God for that. I'm very thankful that as busy as I am, I, I can prioritize properly to, to fit those kinds of things in. Uh, but I encourage you all to do that if you're not already. I know, Eric, you are. I know, you know, Tony, we've talked many times about what you're doing at your church. Bryce, I mean, what can I say about Bryce? Bryce is the best. There's so many men that I've seen do the, these things, and you all are probably doing it. Let's try to teach others. Let's try to help others to know how important it is that we that we reach out to especially those who are coming in off the streets the inquirers the people who are who are really yearning for meaning and truth like when you get to know these men it's one of the most rewarding things like i'm going to sound like father ons now it gives you so much joy to to see someone start to come alive and they do that as they discover orthodoxy and if you're doing it with them if you come alongside them and do it, it is contributing to their salvation and yours at the same time by spending that time. So uh, I didn't mean to get on a soapbox. I don't mean to preach, but I will say based on what Derek has said, thank God that uh, I've been able to do that. I hope that I can continue to do that faithfully. And I encourage you all to do the same because there's nothing else in the world that I think I get more joy doing. Um, so any others that would like to share, I would appreciate hearing from if there's been any successes in your in your churches.
Michael, the longer we sit here, the more things I keep coming up with. In my <laughs> Go ahead. I love it. So this, this Saturday, I mean, in any of the men's breakfasts that we do, I'm always trying to find a, a guest speaker. Um, so one that can take the pressure off of me, but also, you know, create um, an additional interest. So like the last breakfast that we had just before Lent, we had Father Philip speaking to us and kind of outlining his vision for what, he, you know, the men's group and our growth that's, um, that we're on a path at St. Ignatius. And that was, that was very good. And this, and this week we have a parishioner who actually works for OCM, which is the Orthodox Christian Pr Prison Ministry. He's going to come and going to be sharing about that specific ministry um, and how the men of St. Ignatius can get involved and maybe not necessarily that ministry, but other related prison ministries and that type of, uh, that, that type of service work. So um, one I wanted to share about the upcoming topic this Saturday, but also that as you're organizing and trying to um, create um, that fellowship and interest, because it's hard to get men uh, at, at times in, in their busy schedules, whether it's Saturdays or family evenings uh, involved, that uh, having those guest speakers and making that interesting is, is proven to be uh, a success. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate what you've uh, what you've contributed, and uh, and I encourage you to keep doing it because you're giving some great ideas, sharing some great successes. Having a guest speaker has worked for us locally too. In fact, we have had some uh, some some speakers from some local nonprofits, uh, some pro life uh, nonprofit organizations come and talk about how, for example, abortion affects men, not just women. Uh, that's that's been a really big success for us as well. So, yeah, great idea, and I appreciate you sharing that, Eric. Um, if there aren't any other success stories, um, I don't think Father Hans was able to join us this time. So I'll just actually turn it over to Bishop Nicholas. Michael, Father Hans is on with us. Oh, is yeah. he? Did he? I'm here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Father. I didn't see you join. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, great. Uh, Father Hans, we appreciate you joining, and we're actually, it was perfect timing because we're, we're right at the point of the agenda where you give us some closing comments, and uh, we've had some great successes shared. We talked a lot about the upcoming Parish Life Conference, and we've uh, especially had a lot of good ideas shared about what's working well in some of the local parishes, but hoping you can uh, give us some closing comments here before we end the meeting. Yeah, you know, I apologize for this. Um, I had it in my head, eight o'clock. And I look at my calendar, seven o'clock. I made a big mistake. I apologize, guys. No problem. Okay. Um, but I do have some, some comments prepared, I was going to say, and it was just about brotherhood and the love of God, that, that um, the communion between men, the brotherhood between men, also becomes the conduit by which we experience the, very, the love of, of God. And the brotherhood begin between men and when they develop it what happens is is um that the brother fathers a brother you know the spiritual father fathers a spiritual son but the brother fathers the brother as well because when he helps his brother he's fathering the brother in other words the nature of the love is paternal love and uh, and the nature of god's love is is paternal and we call that the energies of God, but that en those energies, they have a telos, they have a focus. And the focus of those energies is to cultivate virtue in man. So um, brotherhood is very important, but brotherhood at the same time is very dynamic in, in the spiritual healing of a man. And it's, it's, it is, it's the union between men and brotherhood that actually that actually focuses this grace, this energy of God in the bond of love to strengthen the man. It works back and forth, but that relationship has to be in, in there in order for, for the, the power and energy of God to be actual, realized and then actualized. And that's one of the reasons why brotherhood is very, very important. Again, I, guys, I'm, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know how this happened. I really feel bad about it, but 
please accept my apology. And um, yeah, just please do. That's okay, Father. It happens to all of us. It's also complicated with Eastern and Central timing uh, in our diocese. It's so vast. What you yeah. said, though, what you said, I'm not sure if you joined earlier. It's it's probably providential what you said, because we were talking about what happens when some of these guys come into our parishes off the street and we just sit down and talk to them. We invite them to coffee. We show them love. We want to get to know them. They're, a lot of them are very excited about orthodoxy, but it's it's just getting it's it's getting to know the person and it's allowing yourself yeah. to open up and for them to get to know you. And that feeling of connection, that brotherhood is also, it's just the healing of being in a community versus the isolation that men right now are feeling so intensely. And earlier in the meeting, Father, I, I mentioned that in our local parish, there was a, a man that recently joined that said he felt so isolated. He was looking for, you know, a way to meet other people. We talked about coming to dice and events, but again, it's this theme of being isolated and needing to be in community with others. That's really the, the solution, isn't it? That really is because... When you're in isolation, you don't have that love. And if you don't have that love, you can't flourish as a man. And what, what happens is if, if, if the boy doesn't have that in his life, and as he grows into the man, what happens is, is at that point, the deficits, the deficits occur, the, the um, inadequacies, the sense of inadequacies, they really grow. Because the way a boy turns into a man is if he's watered by paternal love, the love of a father. Okay. Now, the fact that he has these deficits um, shows that underneath there's a potential for wholeness and healing. Otherwise, he would not be able to feel the deficit, right? So I, I think a lot, I know, I know that these men join the church, but remember, they're called into the church by Christ. Don't ever forget that. They're not there by accident. Christ calls them into the church so that they can be healed. And the healers the healer is, of course, Christ himself, but so are we. So are we. And we have to look at our, our work with these men and all the men in our parish in that light. Because again, like I said at the outset, it's in the brotherhood, it's in the communion, it's in the, in the relationship where that healing occurs. And so when we, we, when we love our brother and seek to strengthen the brother, and that's all the brothers, right? That's that's just not the guys coming in, but it's all the brothers. That creates the conduit, if you will, through which the energy of God can flow, and the man will also experience the love of God the Father. It it moves from concept into experience, and so will we. So will we. And that, my dear brothers. That's how the church is going to be strengthened. And as it strengthens, it will inevitably grow. The beautiful thing is we don't have to have a perfect church. You know, God doesn't demand perfection, but he does require faithfulness. And it's, and it's in the love towards the brethren that that happens. Thank you, Father. I think that's the perfect way for us to, to bring things to a close. However, Sayedna, I would like to ask if you have any final closing thoughts and, and also to close us in prayer? Um, just that reiterating the PLC is very important uh, to participate in it. And also, if you know anyone who wants to be a counselor, uh, female or male counselor, please um, ask them to contact me. All of you have my phone number. Um, they, they would have to be at camp. They would have to have been to camp before. So they know how the camp operates um, before they can become counselors. Um, Father Hans, would you like to uh, end us with a prayer, please? Yes, yes. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life, Dear Heavenly Father, what you have called us into and what you have given us is really a sacred trust. And it's one that you've put into our hands so that we could bring it forward in the service of our brethren, a service that is 
is is energized by your love towards us and our love towards the brothers. And as we comprehend this, as we do it, as we actualize it, then we draw closer to you. And you water our souls, dear Lord. And we show forth your light. In the name of the Father, and of the sons, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Have a great evening. We'll see you in Miami at the PLC. Yep. I tremble for the fearful day of judgment, but trusting the compassion of thy mercy, I shout to thee like David, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy great mercy.